Hi, my name is Andrew Park and this is a video explaining what an electric field is using the FET simulation from University of Colorado. So we talked about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law describes how when you have two charges, for example, two positive charges, then there's a repulsive force between these two positive charges. It also describes how when we have a positive and negative charge, there's a attractive force between these two charges. So here's a silly question to ask. What happens if you only have a single charge in an empty space? Is there any difference between when we have no charge and when we have a single charge? Now, there's no force on this single charge. But when you think about it, the answer is yes, there's a difference. When you have a complete vacuum, no charge at all, then in this space, if you place another charge, well, a new charge, then, well, there's no force on this charge. But instead of vacuum, if you had a vacuum with a single charge, then when you place another charge, then this charge will feel a force, uh, pushing it away from the original charge. So these two cases with a single charge and no charge is different. Electric field is the idea we use to illustrate this. So. Uh, when we place a single charge in empty space, even though there's no force here yet, this charge modifies the space around it. Um, so I can place these electric field sensors and you see how these sensors detect these arrows that are going away from the charge. So what these arrows are illustrating is that if I place another positive charge here, then this, oops, I shouldn't have let go, that modifies the actual electric field. So if I place on another positive charge here, that the first positive charge will push this charge away from it. So there's a repulsive force. If I place this charge here, then it gets pushed up. If I place it here, it gets pushed to the left. They are all repulsive away from the original charge. And what if I place a negative charge? Um, because we are defining these electric fields before we place any second charge, these electric fields don't change when we um, consider a different, say, negative charge. The fields remain the same, but what we say is that the force on this negative charge is opposite to the direction of the field. So instead of being repulsed, repulsed from the positive charge, it's attracted towards the positive charge. So this is a quick introduction to fields and according uh, following coulomb's law you can see that at locations closer to the charge the field is stronger locations farther from charge the field is weaker and in this simulation we can actually take this mark that says show electric field and it shows so i placed the electric field sensors here but this positive charge modifies the property of space around it in every single location near it. So uh, there's electric field here, 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 everywhere. And as I move this charge, you see these electric fields changing. So when the charge moves here, the electric field at the locations far away from the charge is changed less. When the charge is closer, the electric field at the locations closer to the charge is stronger. So that's electric field. Now, why would we, this seems like an um, extra work. Why not simply calculate the force between two charges? So if I have a positive charge here, and if I place another negative charge here, then I simply say it'll get attracted to the positive charge. Why bother with this extra complication of um, abstract thing, such thing as field? Well, there are situations where uh, introducing field makes it makes it simpler to deal with the certain kinds of calculations. For example, imagine I want to set up a situation where if I place another positive charge here, then it'll get pushed to the right. Now, in this situation, if I place the positive charge here, it get pushed that way. It doesn't always get pushed to the right. So a way to make it so that any positive charges placed in this general area gets pushed to the right is to build up a charge distribution like this. I build up a wall of charges. With this wall of charges, 
you will see that when you look at the electric field, the electric fields mostly point to the right. Okay, let me place a few sensors and show what direction the electric fields go. So it's going a little bit upward, um, or here a little bit downward, um, but on the whole, these fields are pointing to the right. And the longer I make this wall, the more infinite I make this wall, the more you see that these um, fields go mostly to the right. So uh, what these fields are showing is that if I place another positive charge here, now it'll get pushed to the right. So now when I'm worrying about the force on this positive charge, in the old way, I had to worry about the interaction between this positive charge and each one of these positive charges. Now, in the new method, dealing with the fields, all I have to know is that somehow that this distribution charge is producing fields that look like this. That means when I want to calculate the force on this charge, all I have to do is take the amount of charge, multiply it by the amount of field that gives me the force. So that's one reason we introduce a field, electric field. And as we talk about um, electromagnetic induction and most importantly, electromagnetic waves, you will uh, begin to see the physical importance of fields. So here we introduce fields as a sort of an abstract idea. I could have done everything that I was describing with the fields without fields. But when we talk about light and what we call electromagnetic wave, what it will turn out to be is a wave of, well, electromagnetic fields, waving electromagnetic fields. And it carries a real physical significance in an electromagnetic wave. This waving of these fields is what carries energy, what allows you to see light. So, um, but this is all I want you to talk about in the context of electric fields for static electricity. The main thing I want you to take away from this is that the direction of the field points at what direction of the force on a positive charge placed at this location would be. At this location, positive charge will get pushed to the right. At this location, positive charge will get pushed to the left. Now, if I'm talking about what would happen to a negative charge, the fields don't change. These fields are produced by these charges here. So if I place a negative charge here, field won't change. But the force on this negative charge will be to the left. If I place a negative charge here, field won't change. But the force on this negative charge will be to the right. So that's it. Uh, we'll look at magnetic fields soon. And then uh, we'll talk about the electromagnetic wave. Bye.